Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Go 24-7 podcast. My name is Bryce Kuhn, alongside Sonny Ship. And when you know it's just us two, one, uh, it could go off the rails pretty quickly. Uh, but two, uh, most likely we're talking about recruiting. Sonny, uh, a big weekend for LSU as uh, they get a commit in Jabori Antoine Jr. Day all the way around. So we're going to talk about that. But let's start off with uh, Mr. Antoine, the Louisiana native. Uh, Corey Raymond obviously played a massive role and LSU being able to get this commitment from the 2025 defensive back. Your thoughts on what Antoine brings to the table and how pivotal this is that Corey Raymond really gets the ball rolling here, especially in that secondary that needs some help. Well, you know, if you're an LSU fan, you look back at at Westgate High School and you think about all the guys that LSU has gotten from the new Iberia area. Then you fast forward to the the previous, uh, you know, the last couple of years to where they haven't had the, you know, the success that they had had before. Derek Williams goes to Texas. Danny Lewis goes to Alabama. Uh, for a while, it, it, it seemed like Jabori was kind of kind of had his eye maybe on uh, on leaving the state. And when I when I spoke with uh, his coach with Coach Antoine late on Monday evening. He, he he kind of explained that side because I, I I mentioned that one of the questions that I asked him was you know coach how big of a role was Corey not in the fact you know not in the fact that LSU didn't maintain a presence once Kerry Cooks and Robert Steeples had moved on because obviously Frank Wilson and Sherman Wilson had been helping out there a lot anyway but how big was Corey in kind of being what pushed LSU over the top? And, and, and he, mm-hmm. you know, he, he explained it well, how, you know, he and Corey, they go back years and years and years. They work together. You know, he said, we're like brothers, you know, best friends are like brothers. And so, you know, LSU, when you, when you take, the, the, the issues that they had had in that area on top of with Antoine, the way it was looking, you know, for to all of a sudden to flip that script, I, th- I think, you know, it, it says a lot about the impact, you know, that that Raymond can have at LSU and that he's already had early on, you know, the number two, uh, no, number three cornerback on the composite, number 58 player in the country overall. Um, I believe he's number two in the state, number two in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, when you crunch all of those numbers together, it's, it's very easy for that high four star to, uh, to come out by his name. And I think that, you know, to be able to get a guy who can play anywhere in the secondary, he could play safety. He could play cornerback. He could play nickel, probably better fitted for that outside cornerback slot or, 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 or a free safety spot. But, a big need, regardless, you know, especially when you see LSU still chasing Terry, Terry Bussey here down the stretch, mm-hmm. uh, you know, down the stretch for 2024 to National Signing Day. You know, it just kind of explain and kind of explains and just kind of reiterates the, um, you know, the the need that LSU has at that cornerback position. Yeah, you mentioned obviously the need there. Uh, we're going to talk about Terry Bussey a little bit later on. Uh, with Antoine, though, I mean, Sonny, you've been really, really big on this. Like this 2025 class, just within the state lines of Louisiana, is ridiculous. 2026 has potential to be really something special. We know Antoine's impact on the field, but how much of an early impact does this make with other guys across the state of saying, hey, we know that the the mission is to lock down this state, but actually getting these guys to commit and then eventually sign it feels like you're starting to gain a lot of more momentum that paid off obviously in 2024 with that class. And they're trying to carry it over into 25 and 26. Yeah. And, you know, you look at Devin Harper, you know, the four-star interior offensive lineman out of, uh, out of Shreveport, out of uh, Calvary Baptist teammates with James Simon, Mm -hmm. both of those two guys, you know, uh, you know, you, you can make an argument that those are the top, two remaining in-state guys as far as if you're ranking a pecking order of who's committed and who's not. I mean, you can make a strong case that Simon and Harper are at the top of the board, you know, at the top of the board of guys who are not committed right now. And, um, you know, so, and I think you're going to see, you know, Harper visited for junior day. Uh, Simon was down in uh, Miami or in South Florida for the uh, for the battle seven on seven tournament where he had, uh, you know, put on a good showing. And it's hard for running backs to put on a good showing at a seven on seven. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're taking them out of their element, you know, and, and so 
to be able to do that, I, I think I think really says something. But you know, if LSU can go and they can close on those two up at Calvary Baptist, I think you'll really start to see. You may not hear it, but I think you're going to hear some 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 coaches from programs who like to recruit Louisiana go. Oh man, that's not good because it's just going to kind of, you know, it's going to kind of just uh, strengthen that grip that Brian Kelly and his staff that they were kind of able to get with this uh, 2024 class, you know, getting, I, th I think it was what, at last count, 12 of the top 13? I think it was, tw yeah, 12 out of the top 13. I'm looking 12 at out it, of yeah. the top 13. And then you fast forward to 2025, you look at where 2025 is trending, you know, if you throw Simon and Harper, on, um, you know, in that in that on that commitment list, and then you look to 2026, which what you were talking about being such a special high top end class, you know, coaches from other states are looking at it like, man, yeah, it's getting tougher and tougher to go into the boot and get guys out. And they didn't, you know, they they didn't say that a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, a no, in, in, ago, a couple of years ago they had a ton of success. Arch Manning, Derek Williams. Aaron Anderson, Tackett Curtis, you know, we can go down the list. You know, I mentioned uh, to, to someone and they said it's almost like a noose tightening. And that's what Brian Kelly's trying to do. I mean, he's trying to tighten the noose, uh, you know, around this state. And look, if you, if you leave Louisiana, either one, it's by uh, a decision that maybe the staff says, hey, we, you know, we're willing to let this one slip by or, uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, other things outside that control. So I think it's really interesting to talk about, you know, how Antoine not only impacts what he's going to bring on the field, which is a, as a playmaker, but also to uh, just his ability uh, to what his commitment means for the future as well. Uh, it was a big junior weekend there, Sonny, uh, in Baton Rouge this past weekend. I know that there were a ton of visitors. You know, you just had to look on social media, the amount of kids that visited that maybe they don't hold an offer yet from LSU in that 2025 class and some 2026 uh, as well. Any standout guys from you that to maybe keep an eye on that maybe be trending towards an offer or anything of that such? Well, I think Devin Harper, I think, you know, Devin Harper, it was big for him to get his mom down here over the weekend to kind of spend some time. She had, she had, she had met other coaches, like I believe Steve Sarkeesian, uh, a couple of other coaches like that, been on some visits. So it was good to be able to kind of put, you know, a face to the voice and to the message that Brian Kelly uh, is sending out. And, uh, and I think LSU has put itself in a really good position there. And uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna before the end of the day, if it go if it even makes it through the end of the day, I'll probably go ahead and push to put a crystal ball in on him. And I think LSU has also has has been in a strong position for his teammate James Simon for a while now. Yeah. And and I I think that's kind of getting to a point to where, you know, that's becoming more a matter of when and not if. And so uh, you know, those are those are obviously Devin Harper. That was a big visit. Philip Wright, a small guy, a small mm -hmm. guy out of uh, Destrehan, twenty twenty five wide receiver, 5'11", 160 pound range, dude can absolutely fly. And you look yeah. at Destrehan, obviously, you know we know about the, you know we know about Tim Moulton from Destrehan way back in the day. He went to LSU. Um, obviously, Justin Jefferson, uh, you know another wide receiver from Destrehan. We know what he did at LSU. Now you have Philip Wright coming up, who they've offered. On Friday night, LSU offered 2026 Destrehan wide receiver uh, Jabari Mack, who, mm. you know, I think is just an absolute stud. And so the wide receiver position, I think, is going to be a very interesting position to follow with this 2025 class, but will also seep into 2026 because you've got two guys already committed in DeCorian Moore, the number one wide receiver in the country. All he did was just ball out down at that seven on seven tournament this weekend to where, you know, he'll probably even find himself moving up in the overall rankings. You offered Philip Wright. You've got Teron Francis on uh, already committed the Edna Carr wide out. So you've already got two on board for 2024. But then you go down the list and you look, you've got Caleb Cunningham who just dropped his top 12 five star wide receiver. LSU is in a, you know, LSU is in a, in a, in a, I think if you're looking at, you know, you could take his 12 and drop it to five. And I think LSU is in that top five with him. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, Kalik Lockett, another five-star receiver that LSU is in a good position with. 
You've got Andrew Marsh, a wide receiver, no, five star wide receiver out of Texas, who's visited LSU that Cortez Hankton likes. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how that 2025 wide receiver board shakes out. Because Ja'Cory Watson, you know, he's a kid out of Houston who's visited LSU probably 10 times over the last couple of yeah. years. You know, he's a guy right outside the top 125, 150, if I'm not mistaken. I know he's a solid four-star wide receiver out of Houston. And, and, you know, he's a guy who was in town. And I think if LSU would jump – I think if LSU would push – would press for him and say, Hey, you know, we really want, we really need you on board. If you're going to get on board, I think he would jump on board. So it's like, how are all these wide receiver numbers going to shake out? You know, it, 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 and that's also a position that Louisiana is never struggling for. You know, that's you can true. go down that's the true. list and you look at wide receivers and I mean, Louisiana always has plenty of them. So then you toss in Philip Wright getting offered. You know, you got Kobe Howard out of Florida. You got Nashawn Montgomery out of Florida who's visited and stuff. That's just going to be a very interesting position to see how it feels out. And I have a feeling that, you know, if it goes like it, like it looks like it could and, you know, more – Underwood, all these guys stay on board. You know, I, I think this could be a situation that we're looking at after the early signing period next year, and people are just shaking their head at the guys that LSU may have to say, we don't have room for. Yeah, it's it starts to get very, very crowded uh, when you look at that. And you mentioned Ja'Cory Watson. Uh, the composite ranking has him as uh, a top 200 player in the 23rd ranked receiver in the country. Okay, Solid so top 200, star. okay. Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. So they've got him in there. Uh, Jacory watching that a Shadow Creek, but yeah, I mean, you talk about just some of the numbers. Um, it's it, it's it's going to get crazy, and I don't know about you, Sonny, but if you start kind of looking at your spreadsheets, and I don't know where the cutoff line is going to be for this staff when you say, "Hey, we've yeah. got to develop the guys we still have on the roster because we don't want to lose all them to the portal and have a you know a majority of freshmen on the roster." But man, if you're a recruiting staffer, and we're going to get to this here in a second, but if you're on the recruiting end of, of the staff and that department in LSU right now, man, you're kind of uh, licking your chops with where the momentum has taken you, especially with some of these names uh, coming up. And I like what you said about Ja'Cory Watson. It does have the feeling like if they really push, he would say, yeah, I'm on board and let's roll type of thing. I, I feel like that's kind of where things sit with uh, Watson and LSU. Uh, one of the big moves that was made, obviously, and there's still a lot to kind of be determined here, Sonny, is uh, Austin Thomas. And, you know, uh, the guy that's going to be coming back to LSU, uh, still a lot of the uh, particulars that need to be kind of worked down in what frame, what is this going to look like. But I know this is a guy that obviously you're familiar with. Kind of wanted to get maybe for the fans listening who maybe say, yeah, I've heard of Austin Thomas, but maybe I'm new to recruiting, you know, really want to learn more about it. What type of impact can Thomas have at LSU, especially in today's age of NIL and, you know, just the the kind of new pro player relations that we're seeing these uh, departments and personnel departments kind of have to create uh, across college football? Yeah, and Thomas is a guy who's, uh, you know, who kind of got his start in uh, in recruiting and he was actually uh, on it on his first stint in Baton Rouge. He was actually one of the one of the first general manager, you know, guys in college football with that role and with that title. And um, you know, came in really, uh, you know, real really earned his stripes, I guess you could say, in recruiting. But always had the, you know, always had the goal uh, of moving up, of of actually, mm -hmm. you know, being in a general manager type role like you see in the NFL. Um, you know, moving up to an associate athletic director and, and kind of kind of going that path more so than the recruiting side of it. But, you know, I hear people say, well, you know, this is his third time coming back. You know, they say, well, why did he leave? And, you know, better job opportunities, more money. You know, why do yeah. people leave jobs? But I will say this. I've never I've never. Let's see. I don't think I've ever worked at a place that I left, you know, and I don't have a very deep, long job history. I've, I've stayed with people for a long time and stuff. And like, even in college and stuff, but well, I do remember that. I do remember quitting one job and then going back three days later and begging for it back and then telling me no. So <laughs> that's another, we'll throw that out. We'll throw that out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, but 
to come back to a job, to come back to a place, a place that you live, you move back from, you move back to for a third time, you know, mm-hmm. I, th- I think that shows, you know, how much he really wants to be here, you know, yeah. and, and, and that, you know, whatever happened in the times before, you know, uh, you know, I, I know that, when, when someone offers you more money and things like that, and you have a family coming up, you got to take all those things into consideration. But I think Austin Thomas is back where he really wants to be. And that's good for LSU because what LSU, I think if you go back and if you look at one of the things that one of the areas maybe that they need to need to need to get a little stronger at, and I think was kind of highlighted in this layout in this past uh, transfer portal cycle is that it needs to, it needs to get a little more, a little more aggressive and, and kind of tighten the, I don't want to say, uh, you know, tighten the rope a little bit around the NIL side, the roster management side, and just kind of tighten everything together where you kind of get everything working a little more to where everyone's pulling the rope in the same direction instead mm. of trying to, you know, instead of playing tug of war. And I think that's something that the, that we've seen um, with the, uh, from the LSU side over the last couple of years is that you didn't really, ha- it didn't really seem like everyone was working in the same direction. And I think Austin Thomas is going to kind of tie the roster side of it. And, and, and kind of make it a neater package to where it's easier for the NIL people to do their job. Yeah. And so, you know, I know a lot of his roles are still to be determined, but I think you're going to see the biggest impact that he'll make in that roster management and be a, being able to where all of the ducks are maybe in a row, a little or lined up a little bit more to where mm-hmm. when the NIL folks have to come in and they have to do their job, it's a little more seamless. And I yeah. think that's something that maybe was lacking. Um, you know, once, once Polian left, I, I think there was a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a disconnect mm-hmm. in those two sides. And, and I think that he's going to be someone who is going to, you know, who's going to connect all of the dots that need to be connected to where we can see LSU have a little stronger presence in that NIL market. Yeah, that's uh, man. You talk about some of the complaints that we have on our message board, and uh, just across the LSU fan base, Austin Thomas sounds like he's the guy to kind of uh, fill that void. That I like which how you put that. Maybe reconnect the dunts, maybe bridge the gap that was there. Yeah, that's uh, a, that's a good season. way to put it. Bridging the gap. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of a gap. Uh, the uh, Masters you know, hats giving you some brain, ch- brain brain power this morning. Can, huh? can, can you not tell, man? I'm ready. I'm ready for April. Like, that's I know. I know. For, man. You I'm, had I'm pumped, me thinking because so. I was like, wait a minute. Isn't the Masters usually in like April or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. You said that hey, you wanted to record this at 8 30 in the morning. And typically, I don't shower before I go to the gym. So I was like, oh, gosh, I got to throw on a hat. So I don't wake up with bedhead here. And uh, as we roll in the morning, you know, just difficult job that we have you know that we just slave over each and every single day gotta so. love it though and you can just roll out of bed throw a hat on sit down at your <laughs> desk and you know the wife's in here spending an hour and 15 minutes in the morning you know gotta drive 45 minutes and stuff and she comes <laughs> home and why are you in pajama pants <laughs> yeah yeah why have you not changed since i last seen you yeah it's kind of <laughs> Kind of, kind of how it works. Uh, Sonny, I wanted to get just one more quick comment here before we, uh, before we end this uh, today's show. You know, Terry Bussey was coming off that Georgia visit. You mentioned it earlier. LSU still in on him. Any updated kind of feelings on how you feel about this thing? Or, I mean, obviously you feel like LSU is maybe still in the race, but to what level? I mean, this is uh, this is one that's going to go all the way up to signing day. We know that he's still going to get on campus. Uh, but to just kind of your thoughts on maybe the latest news on Terry Bussey. Yeah, you know, I think when you, I, th- I think when you, you know, when when you look at the schools who are obviously Georgia, LSU, the schools mm-hmm. that he's not committed to, with him committed to A and M, I think LSU still poses the biggest threat to Texas A and M. But what really, what I've kind of been thinking of more and more as we get down the stretch is, it's far odd how he stayed he stayed committed to A and M all of this time through all the turbulence through all of the you know the coaching changes yeah. through everything never backed off that commitment to AM and you know and it kind of makes me wonder like okay if he's waited this long if he stayed with them this long 
what's going to be that, you know, what's the, what's the, the, the domino that needs to fall for him to drop that pledge, you know, what is it? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to see him actually decommit from Texas A&M if he would sign with someone else. I think he would just probably just, just make that flip, but I'm getting Mm -hmm. a little, um, I'm, you know, the LSU side, continues to have some uh, guarded optimism, I guess you could put it, you know, when you talk okay. to someone from the LSU side, some guarded optimism. Obviously he's coming in on Wednesday. He'll be here. Uh, he'll be here for a one day visit. Then he'll go to Texas A&M this weekend for his official visit. So I don't think you're really going to have a good feel out on things until he goes on that A&M visit. You know, I'd put it, I'd, I'd put it where LSU LSU can't ask for anything more. They've already hosted him on his official visit in September. Yeah. They got him back for uh, they got him back for a game a few weeks later. I believe it might have been the Auburn game that he came if he that he came in for. And now you're getting him back on campus, coming off of an coming on the heel off the heels of an official visit right before he goes on another official visit to a school he's committed to. So you couldn't ask for anything more as far as being able to set everything up. And just how we talked about how Corey Raymond is, has kind of pushed LSU over the top for Jabori Antoine. I really think that that's what it's going to take for LSU to be able to get over that hump and to be able to, to get him to where he's ready to drop that pledge to A&M. I think Corey yeah. Raymond is going to have to be that, uh, you know, he's going to have to be that influence. And we've seen Bussy Bussy comment to Steve Wiltfong about how he likes Corey Raymond. They don't have a deep history together. And so yeah. how he, you know, how he likes him, he likes how they've gotten to know one another. So, so I really think it's going to be big for that to just continue and then you hope that coming off of that A&M visit is that the questions that he had to where he never he never solidified his pledge to A&M, whatever questions he had that prevented him from doing that, you know, you hope he still has those questions coming off of that A&M visit. Because if he goes into that A&M visit and if he gets questions answered and if he feels a little more comfortable than he's felt all of this time, I think he's going to be, I think it's going to be a harder, I think it's going to be a hard flip. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. And uh, I, know, I think he said this, but just wanted to kind of finalize this for our viewers and listeners. Bussy's plan is to be on campus on Wednesday and then kind of round out the weekend with a trip to College Station. And then head, uh, to, yeah, and then head to College Station. And he still yeah. says that, he still says that, that you know he he hope plans to have a decision you know by signing day but of course he also said in the past that if that if he needs to take it farther that he could so you know man yeah. gotta love it <laughs> hey hey it's national signing day so even if it's one you got to have some kind of drama right there you go yeah it's you got to have some type of uh some uh some theatrics to, uh, to go around it but that's kind of latest in recruiting around LSU My name's Bryce Kuhn. He is Sonny Ship. We appreciate you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Go 24-7 podcast.